how would the United States fight a nuclear war? Really interested to see what we got with this. See if a nuclear war were to happen. What would the United States do and how would they act? So really interested to get into this one. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. Let's just straight into this and see what we got. It's been over 80 years since a major conflict has broken out in Europe. Right. The result has left many with a deep sense of uncertainty. Okay. Nearly 70% of Americans surveyed by the American Psychological Association feared that we are at the beginning stages of World War III. 70%. The prospect of nuclear conflict, once unthinkable, is now a very real possibility. Oh, Today, wow. we're going to explore the unthinkable. How would the United... Yo, bear in mind, this is to do with, like, based on Russia and Ukraine situation, right? Bro... Has the situation got even worse with the current situation right now with uh, uh, Iran and Israel? Yo. You know what? This would be scary times, United man. United States respond during a nuclear conflict. What's America's nuclear war plan? How many nuclear weapons are readily available to okay. the president? Where are they? What are their targets? How many missiles would be launched? How many casualties could we expect after American bombs reach their destinations? Right. What would the world look like going forward? And most importantly, could the United States win a global nuclear war? Oh, this would be horrible. Bro, I'm in the UK, man. I would be screwed. <laughs> Yo, you guys in America might actually stand a chance. Bro, in the UK, you see, that, you see how small the UK is? Bro, send a couple of nuclear bombs to the UK. We're all done, bro. You know what I mean? Adiosa. Nuclear triad. The United States operates under a nuclear triad consisting of land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, sea-based submarines armed with submarine launch ballistic missiles, or SLBMs, and air-based strategic bombers carrying okay. gravity bombs and air-launched nuclear cruise missiles. Okay. Now let's take a look at each part of America's triad and its weapon delivery systems. The first and most well-known part of America's nuclear triad is its land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles, right. or ICBMs. The U.S. has 400 LGM-30 Miniman-3 ICBMs that are launched via silos. ICBMs, yeah, 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 they're just, they're the missiles that's launched from the ground, right? These 400 missiles have a range of over 6,000 miles and have near pinpoint accuracy. When launched, the Three Strays Miniman 3 travels at speeds of over 15,000 miles per hour, reaching its target in under 30 minutes. Each Miniman 3 oh, missile- Oh, that is crazy. So it can reach 6,000 miles in 30 minutes? So realistically, you would have like between like a 20 minute, 30 minute time of knowing if you're done for, bro. So carries one warhead. 200 Miniman 3 missiles are armed with a 335 kiloton W87 Mark 21A warhead, while okay. the other half are armed with a 300 kiloton W78 Mark 12 warhead. Each warhead has around 40 times the destructive power of the bombs dropped on Japan in 1945. America's Miniman 3 silos are based 40 times. 40 times. Bro, that I, the warheads look pretty small. To say that's 40 times, bro. Oh, mad. It's in three rural areas. The 90th Missile Wing at F.E. Warren Air Base in Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming. The 91st Missile Wing at Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. And the 341st Missile Wing at Maelstrom Air Force Base in Montana. Each wing has three squadrons. And each squadron has 50 Miniman 3 silos. I got a question. Why is it in the middle of America? Wouldn't it make sense to have these missiles on the coast of America? So it's like closer and it's got to cover less distance. Why in the middle? Are they in the middle? Maybe because in America, there's not really too much in the middle. There's a lot of like just land. Is that why? Collectively controlled by five hardened underground control launch centers, each operated with two military officers around the clock at all times. In the yeah, you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't think Americans would be very happy if, like, you know, there was 300 missiles, right, that can, you know, take out a very, very large radius, right? 
within civilization. Like heavy, like like imagine like these in like New York or California, bro. Like yeah, yeah, people won't be happy. By five hardened underground control launch centers, each operated with two military officers around the clock at all times. Okay. In the event that launch command centers are destroyed in a surprise attack, or the military officers inhabiting the launch command control centers get cold feet, these missiles can and will be remotely launched from an airborne command center, carrying out orders from the president. Okay. As with wow. all things, there are advantages and disadvantages of the silo-based Miniman 3. Its primary advantage is that these 400 missiles make the most responsive leg of the nuclear triad. America's land-based ICBM force has remained on continuous, around-the-clock, 24-7 alert since 1959. Oh, they can really? be quickly launched in less than five minutes. America's silo-based ICBMs offer a strategic advantage as well. Due to their remote launch capability, an effective nuclear attack against America's Minutemen 3 silos will require at least 400 warheads, or one bomb aimed at each silo. For oh, maybe that's why it's in the middle. So it's harder for people to attack as well, right? Yo, that's crazy though, that they could all be launched within five minutes. Like, it, it makes sense how you can do it quick, but like, Imagine, imagine I wouldn't want to be the guy in charge in a heated situation, bro. Because I have wife is like making the judgment of doing this, using this. Let's hope, it, hopefully it never happens. Because the nuclear war is never good, bro. N nuclear, well, we never had it, but nuclear war, man, oh, it would be the worst. These silos will require horrible. at least 400 warheads, or one bomb aimed at each silo, forcing right. the enemy to use and deplete a considerable amount of their nuclear arsenal. But right. this strategic advantage also highlights the Miniman 3's disadvantages. America's land-based Miniman 3s are inherently vulnerable, as their location is commonly known, and therefore silos can and will be easily targeted. As okay. a result, in the event of a large-scale attack, the president would be put in a sticky situation. He or she would have to either use these 400 missiles or lose them, forcing a large-scale retaliatory attack in response to perceived incoming warheads targeting American silos. With wait, 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 wait. You know if these missiles hit these, wouldn't that make them explode even more and just create the big... Or nah? Do you know what I'm saying? It's so like if the missile, an enemy missile, hit these locations, which are carrying a lot of big bombs, right? Wouldn't that just create a massive, an absolute massive explosion? Bro, that would be devastating, surely, right? Enemy missiles already in flight, the leader of the free world would only have 15 minutes to decide. And once a missile wow. is launched, there's no turning back. Yeah, there isn't. There really isn't. The second arm of America's nuclear triad is its air-based strategic bombers. The U.S. Air Force currently operates a fleet of 66 strategic bombers. Okay. America's strategic bombers are organized into nine bomb squadrons and five bomb wings at three bases. Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota, Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana, and Whitman Air Force Base in Missouri. There are 300 nuclear weapons currently deployed at strategic bomber bases in the U.S. An additional 100 tactical nuclear bombs are deployed at NATO air bases in oh, Europe. Oh, wow. America's bomber fleet consists of 46 B-52. Wait, so America even have nuclear bombers within Europe for quick access? <sighs> Yo, that's a scary thought to think, you know. The fact that, like, they have them in Europe, right? just in case like the fact that like they got them just like it makes sense why they've got them you know so they're more protected america because th there isn't anything better for america than fighting away from america right poor me i'm right here <laughs> bro scary ties bro War is scary times. Currently deployed at strategic bomber bases in the U.S. An additional 100 tactical nuclear bombs are deployed at NATO air bases in Europe. Right. America's bomber fleet consists of 46 B-52 Strata Fortress bombers and 20 B-2 stealth bombers. The B-2 stealth bomber We've can carry them. up to 16 1,200 kiloton nuclear gravity bombs. Each gravity bomb contains a massive payload of 150 times the destructive power of the bomb dropped in Hiroshima. The B-52 Strata Fortress bomb. Wait, one bomb is 150 times. One bomb within a bomber. Bro, oh my. 
Yo, America is packing some heat, bro. 50 times the destructive power of the bomb dropped in Hiroshima. Wow. The B-52 Stratofortress bomber is a long-range heavy bomber with the ability to travel up to 9,000 miles without refueling. The B-52 carries up to 20 AGM-86 subsonic air launch cruise missiles. When launched, the AGM-86 missile can travel over 1,500 miles at speeds exceeding 555 miles per hour. Using its oh, independent wow. guidance system to deliver a W-80 150 kiloton warhead to its target in less than 90 seconds. Each warhead contains around 20 times the destructive power of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Oh, wow. The primary advantage of using air-based strategic bombers is that they can be called back if necessary. Right. Furthermore, subsonic air-launched nuclear cruise missiles are a lot harder to defend against. When launched, an enemy force would have to counterattack each missile individually, making the- Yo, I, bro, watching this, man. Thank God America's on my team. Hey, America, never, 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 never. Please, please, always be allies with the UK. If you know, if you, look, if you guys like depart from the UK, I'm just coming to, I'm, you know, I'm just coming to America anyway, bro. You guys are well equipped. Well equipped. When launched, an enemy force would have to counterattack each missile individually, making defense costly yeah, and complicated. The small size also makes them difficult to detect on radar. The primary disadvantage of strategic bombers is their response time. They take a lot longer to get in the air, and if air bases aren't on high alert, or if planes aren't already in flight, there's a high probability of them being destroyed in an initial surprise attack. This is particularly true for bomber bases located in Europe. Um, excuse me? What well, I'm doing for? I'm dead! Prob probable nuclear targets in the UK and France. Bro, you just nuked the whole of the UK. Wait, I'm around here. <sighs> Mad. Mad. Oh, I'm gone. Yep, I just said I'm around here. Yep, bye-bye. Bro. Why did it have to show me this, man? Why, why did it have to show me this, man? Okay, I'm moving to Italy or Spain then. Why, why, why are they not getting bombed? Are they not a part of Europe, Leo? Huh? Oh, I'm moving there. I'm moving there. Uh, I, yeah, I've got to get out of the UK, man. Bro, I swear UK has been hit the most. Or is that because UK is so small? It just looks like it. The UK is just covered it, bro. Yeah, mad, mad, mad. That's scary. That's actually scary. The last and most important part of America's nuclear triad are its nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines. The U.S. Navy operates a fleet of 14 Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines. Each submarine carries 20 Trident II submarine-launched ballistic missiles. The Trident II SOBM is the most destructive weapon in America's nuclear arsenal. Each missile is armed with either four or five 475 kiloton W-88 warheads. Wow. In theory, each sub can launch its entire 20-missile payload, virtually undetected in under seven minutes. I never knew the warhead situation, bro. I just thought the missile just came as one piece and when the missile hits, it, it all explodes. I didn't know the warheads, you can like depart from the missile, bro, and do their own damage. Mad. Never do that. When launched, the three-stage Trident II travels at speeds of over 18,000 miles per hour, has a range of over 7,500 miles, and typically reaches its target or targets in around 15 minutes. I thought it would Each be warhead bigger is guided well. by a multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle, or MIRV, allowing a single Trident II missile to deliver up to five warheads to five separate targets. Just one Trident II missile alone, armed with five warheads, has 154 times the destructive power of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. You're telling me... I, I need to see one of these warheads like in person, see how big it is. Because they don't look very big. And that's 150 times the bomb on Hiroshima. Bro, what? 
Overall, the U.S. has around 70% of all of its warheads on submarines, and with good reason. Okay. There are numerous advantages of the ballistic missile submarine. Yo, America, you guys are so lucky you're so big as well. Because, like, if you were, if a nuclear war were to happen, a lot of America, I reckon, would actually be untouched. Like, yeah, you would have to deal with the aftermath of a nuclear war, right? Which is bad. But in the UK, bro, we don't even get no aftermath. We're just gone. You know what I mean? There's no UK. For starters, they make up the most survivable leg of the nuclear triad. Ballistic missile submarines are virtually undetectable at sea. Their stealth design makes finding one an almost impossible task, giving pause to potential adversaries. With at least 10 submarines on constant patrol at all times, ballistic missile submarines assure that the U.S. can strike at any time, anywhere, oh, really? even after a surprise attack. With each sub carrying an average of 100 warheads each, they have enough firepower to make just one submarine the sixth most powerful nuclear power in the world. In terms of disadvantage, advantages there simply are none they, they, bro he just said there's no disadvantages bro there's just no disadvantage <laughs> but oh wow oh wow When people imagine a nuclear war, the first thing that comes to mind is large cities like Los Angeles and Moscow being incinerated in a blaze of nuclear hellfire. Right. While this would definitely be a likely outcome, the reality is that around 70% of the 1800 nuclear warheads currently deployed by the United States aren't aimed at large cities, but instead at an enemy country's nuclear forces. Okay. To better understand this... Yeah, I think that's what people need to realize, right? We all think it, when, when a war happens, they're going to take out the most people, right? It's so like big cities. But nah, they're going to take out the the, 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 the weapons, you know, the, the areas that's going to be attacking them. So like the military bases, the weapons and the missile bases and stuff like that. So they're large cities, but instead of enemy them. countries, nuclear forces. Right. To better understand this, we first need to take a look at America's current strategic nuclear war plan, also known as the Single Integrated Operational Plan or PSYOP. First drawn up in 1950, the PSYOP focused primarily on the Soviet Union. While today most of the weapons in the war plan still target Russia, other countries such as China, North Korea, India, and Pakistan are included as well. In this oh, wow. video, we'll take a look at a nuclear exchange with the only nuclear power comparable to the United States, Russia. the Russian Federation. This portion of America's nuclear war plan is called Major Attack Option 1. Major Attack Option 1 is the most demanding attack option available to the president. Yeah, I can't get over how big Russia is. Jesus, man. Massive. Should the Commander-in-Chief order Major Attack Option 1, the resulting attack would consist of over 1,000 warheads targeting Russian nuclear forces, including ICBM silos, road mobile ICBMs, submarine bases, primary airfields, nuclear storage facilities, design and production complexes, critical command and control facilities, and civilian population centers. Now let's mm. take a look at Major Attack Option 1, its Russian targets, the American nuclear weapons used, and the overall outcome of an American thermonuclear attack on Russia. Okay, that was a lot, bro. That was a lot. Bro, I'm, I'm here saying Russia's massive. I, I think America just took out the whole of Russia. That, that's a lot of missiles. Look, look at this. Bro, bro, yo, yo, yo. That is mad. That is mad. That is mad. Yo, it is crazy how a country can even do that much damage to a country of this size. Wow. And that that was a thousand, right? They got more than a thousand. They got more of them. <sighs> Bro, war man is scary. Hopefully this never happens. And I'm in little UK, man. I'd be taken out so quick. It's not even funny, man. But yeah.
Really crazy. Really interesting video, though. Did enjoy that. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know what your plan would be if this ever happened. My plan is... Bro, I don't even know where any shows are or anything. My plan is literally just saying goodbye. That, 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 that's literally it, bro. If this was to happen and the UK is getting attacked with nuclear bombs, goodbye, bro. Goodbye. It'd be really interesting to see if you guys got any plans to if this was to ever like happen and stuff. You got 30 minutes when nuclear bombs is going to hit where you are. It'd be a really interesting topic to dive into. But yeah, great video. Enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.